The following program is underwritten by the generous support of Associates of Glens Falls and Loomis and LaPan Insurance. Since 1852, they have been assisting both businesses and individuals across the country secure the most comprehensive insurance products available. Associates of Glens Falls and Loomis and LaPan are one of New York's largest independently owned insurance agencies. Public affairs programming on Look TV is underwritten by the generous support of Pennell's Restaurant, classic Italian American food since 1922, and Stored Tech, technology solutions for computers, networks, and phone. Stored Tech, your technology, our passion. 1922, Babe Ruth debuts with the Yankees. WGY signs on air. Exterminator wins the Saratoga Cup, and Pennell's Restaurant opens its doors for the very first time. For five generations, Pennell's has been preparing delicious Italian food, served in a comfortable, home-like setting where everyone is welcome. 90 years of authentic Italian recipes, 90 years of the freshest ingredients, and 90 years of the finest classic Italian dishes, all made daily by hand. Pennell's Italian Restaurant, a Saratoga dining tradition since 1922. Firms deal only with prevention, the systems that block hackers and viruses. Stored Tech knows the root cause is actually good people doing bad things. So we offer a security training program which includes certifying all participants to show they understand the basics. Technology solutions for computers, networks, and phones. Stored Tech, your technology, our passion. Well, good evening. Tonight's a, a regular town board meeting. It's uh, 7.01 p.m. We are in the activity center. And if you wouldn't mind joining me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As you might have noticed, Supervisor Strau and Councilwoman uh, Switzer are not here tonight, so there's three of us. Um, first item on the agenda is to enter into the Board of Health. Do I have a motion? So moved. Okay. We'll move into the Board of Health. Rose? It's a resolution setting a public hearing on sewage disposal variance application of Adam Leonardo. <laughs> nope, not you guys. Oh, one. One. <laughs> Soon. So this is a resolution setting a public hearing for Adam Leonardo, who lives at um, 12 Hall Road Extension in the town of Queensbury. He's seeking one variance to install a leak system five feet from his property line in lieu of the required 10 feet, 10 foot setback. The res uh, public hearing is to be held on Monday, September 23rd, 2019 here in the activity center. Um, any, anybody have any comments, questions? No. I assume before that time, a couple of us will do a site yes. visit. We'll set that up. Now, the uh, firm that's handling this one, I'm not familiar with, nor is John. So it's we out of, they're out of Latham. Latham. Yeah. So we may have to reach out to them. Okay. But um, I'll make a note to do that. All right. So do we uh, you want a motion? Seek a motion. So moved. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. We'll uh, move out of the Board of Health. Anybody want to move us out? I'll move us. Second. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So, the second item on the agenda is a public hearing. Rose? This is a public hearing on Queensbury Technical Park Sewer District <coughs> Extension Number 7. Okay. Gentlemen, now you can come. <laughs> So this is a public hearing we set two weeks ago, and it is uh, to extend the Queensbury Technical Park Sewer District um, to one additional lot identified as map location 309.10.1.97, located on Luzerne Road. Gentlemen? Good evening. Uh, Tom Center with NACE Engineering and uh, the property owner, Mickey Hayes. Um, as you stated, this project is to connect a 3.4 acre parcel 
that runs along uh, Luzerne Road to the existing uh, sewer main, 12 inch sewer main, which runs right adjacent to the parcel. Uh, the project proposes 13 duplexes. Um, the entire uh, sewer within the parcel is gonna be maintained and operated by the developer and owner. Um, City of Glens Falls has provided a letter that they have uh, adequate sewer capacity for us to connect uh, to their system. Uh, everything else is pretty straightforward. Kind of leave it to you guys if you have any additional questions. George? No, I don't know. Okay, I will open the public hearing. Any member of the public wish to speak on this public hearing? I see none, so we'll close the public hearing. Anyone wish to? So moved. Well, if, if you want to move I'm forward, you first have to go through the seeker. My apologies. Yes. Um, you have the, the, the short form EAF that was yep. prepared by you, Tom, right? Yes. Um, so you've had that. You've had an opportunity to review part one. Um, and if uh, if not, you know, reacquaint yourself with what is on part one. And when you're ready, I can lead you through the questions in part two. You ready? Okay, I'm going to lead through the questions. They're on page, well, part two. Um, <clears throat> number one, will the proposed action create a material conflict with an adopted land use plan or zoning regulations? No. no. Will the proposed action result in a change in the use or intensity of use of land? Well, it kind of does, doesn't it? It may. I mean, it's what is it? Commercial? It's, it's a commercial? no, or it will, the column one is no, or small impact may occur. Column two is medium to large impact may occur. I'll say no to small impact. Okay. Catherine? Yeah. Agree. Hmm. So number three, will the proposed action impair the character or quality of the existing community? No. no. No, we're small. Number four, will the proposed action have an impact on the environmental characteristics that cause the establishment of a critical environmental area? No. 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 Number five, will the proposed action result in an adverse change in the existing level of traffic or affect the existing infrastructure for mass transit, biking, or walkway? No. 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 Number six, will the proposed action cause an increase in the use of energy and it fails to incorporate reasonably available energy conservation or renewable energy opportunities? No. Will the proposed action cause It reads funny. <laughs> yes, it is. It, it was written <laughs> by uh, New York State. Will the proposed action <laughs> cause an increase in the use of energy? Well, yes. And if so, if, if, does it fail to incorporate well, if so, reasonably? Is that what it's really supposed to say? And if so, does it fail? Yes. Yeah, okay. Basically. And if so, does it fail to incorporate reasonable? And column one is no or small impact may Are occur. Are there going to be any renewable energy um, actions? It's only it's only if it uses more energy, and I don't see this using more energy. So if it's not using more energy, then it's but not it going is to using fail. more. Energy. How is it using more well, it's, it's, it's several apartments, right? So it's going to be using more energy. Okay. You're creating an... But right? I, thought that, I thought the secret was in relation to the actual... The, this is sewer. authorizing the sewer district. Right. Sewer we, we district have, extension, which is a part of that is to allow the, um, the use the for the apartments. Oh. But... Uh, again, the question is, you know, does it cause an increase in use of energy? Is it no, it won't, or okay. is it a small impact okay, to so the use of energy, or is it a moderate to large impact may occur? Okay, so the actual building is not an issue here. It's the actual just sewer. The sewer well, structure. we're authorizing the sewer district, but we can't ignore the uh, other the impact impacts of, of, of that the decision be that would be segregating. So under those know, conditions, I would agree with you, small, small impact. Small impact. So I'm small just curious impact. though, yeah. I am curious. There, there's also a, commer there was a commercial uh, use there prior to this. So this is a change from Podnorski's uh, landscaping business was there. So there already was some energy use, there already was some, uh, and it's gonna to meet today's building code which obviously has many 
uh, new upgrades to the electrical and things like that. So today's building code is. But you're not planning to put any solar or anything like that, uh, renewable energy? Because that's kind of what the second part of the question is. Um, not at this time, we didn't have anything in the plan. Um, obviously, we with the new building code being strict, it's a, they probably use half as much power as an apartment that was built 20 years ago. Okay. Uh, and there'll be natural gas and, and 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 we try to do extras if that's part of the way we promote the project too because a lot of people are more conscious of the energy use it, for their they're the ones paying the utilities and for the promotion of the project okay yeah, so no i guess so no or small impact no or small impact. okay number seven will the proposed action impact existing a public or private water supplies yes yes <laughs> Small impacts. Is it, uh, and is the impact, if there's also, if there's an impact, is it a negative impact? So is it no, no. or small impact, or no is or it small. moderate to large impact? No, no or, small. or small impact. Okay. For both. Mm -hmm. For this, and B is public private wastewater Waste water. treatment yeah. utilities. No or small impact. Number eight, will the proposed action impair the character or quality of important historic, archaeological, architectural, or aesthetic resources? No. no. <laughs> will the proposed, number nine, will the proposed action result in an adverse change to natural resources? No. 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 Number 10, will the proposed action result in an increase in the potential for erosion, flooding, or drainage problems? No. no. Number 11. No, as long as. I mean, your plans incorporate stormwater yeah, so management. Yeah. Yeah. So no, yeah. no. Uh, number eleven will the proposed action create a hazard to environmental resources or human health? No, no. Then we have a resolution that's two point one a that um, envisions that you um, found no or small impacts. Otherwise, we'd postpone and. <laughs> figure out how you're going to deal with it, um, which a uh, resolution adopting a um, negative declaration. Yeah. So. I would move to accept that. You, know, Can you close the public hearing? I will okay. close the public hearing. Hey, Rose. <laughs> so now that you have resolution 2.1a, which deals with seeker, and 2.1b, which deals with um, if you adopt number one you can go to so i would two. move 2.1 again after the closing of the public hearing i'll read that right 2.1a yeah. it's a resolution adopting seeker de determination of non-significance regarding queensbury technical park sewer district extension number seven so moved second no council person switzer is absent strau is absent metabir yes atherton yes and from yes and 2.1b. Resolution of approving Queensbury Technical Park Sewer District Extension Number Seven. Anybody care to make a motion? I'll move it. Second. Roll call vote. Councilperson Atherton. Yes. Barone. Yes. Metabier. Yes. We'll get through this. <laughs> Thanks. <Matt. laughs> that? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So next is the privilege of the floor. Tonight we have 13 resolutions. We'll read every, each one out. And then you, if you have any comments or care to speak about them, you'll have three minutes to come up to the table and speak your mind about the resolutions. So we'll start with 4-1, Rose. Resolution authorizing purchase of playground equipment for <clears throat> Hovey Pond to capital project. Capital project. This is a project we've talked about in the past. Um, they are closing the Freedom Park uh, playground that's currently on Glenwood Avenue, and they're moving it to Hovey Pond. Um, it is going to be a much better playground. Uh, keep in mind that it has to be ADA compliant. Um, and so that is going to cost us a little bit of money. The amount of the capital project is currently at $104,050. Um, we did, uh, the uh, rec department did shop this and this is the best uh, uh, rate they came in at. 
so. Is that so? Pardon? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. This this was under state contract. Under state contract. Excuse me. Under state contract. Resolution 4-2. Resolution authorizing town clerk, receiver of taxes and assessments, and deputy town clerk 3 to attend Blazer Fish and Power Conference. This is a resolution where we'll be sending two of our clerks to California uh, <clears throat> in February of 2020 to go to a laser fish and power conference. Um, it's important to note that uh, the registration fees for these two ladies are being waived. So the only costs associated with this will be transportation, food, and hotel. And this is a conference to learn more about the laser fish, laser fish system that we use in the uh, town. 4-3. Resolution authorizing 2019-2020 Justice Court Assistance Program grant application for grant funds from New York State Office of Court Administration. This is an opportunity for us to uh, apply for a grant that would uh, award us up to $30,000. Um, the amount if we received it, would be used, one, to buy a, a new metal detector for the court system and to make other improvements in the court. 4-4. Four, four. Resolution appointing members of the 2019 Glen Lake Aquatic Plant Growth Control District Advisory Committee. As you may be aware, um, we have a uh, advisory committee for Glen Lake Aquatic uh, Management District and they do appoint their own members, but they have to be approved by this town board. Uh, for 2019, they've up asked to appoint Paul Derby, Dean Bosher, Susan Hurley, Paul McPhillips, and Mike O'Connor. We certainly thank these uh, folks for their uh, commitment to Glen Lake and uh, hope it gets approved. Four or five. Resolution authorizing engagement of BST and company CPAs to provide professional auditing services for fiscal year ending December 31st, 2019 through 2023. So this was an RFP that we sent out. We did receive three proposals. Um, all three companies are extremely good at what they do. The incumbent, which is uh, BST, uh, actually came in with the lowest bid. Uh, you may notice that the price has increased over the last few years, but with new tax laws, the um, uh, document that we received went from 55 pages to now 88 pages due to the federal and state changes. So um, they proposed a fee of $32,500 for 2019, 33,250 for 2020, 34,000 for 2021, 34,750 for 2022, and 35,500 for 2023. Next, 4-6. Resolution amending resolution number 172, 2019, appointing security officer and chairperson of information technology security committee. So earlier this year, we appointed um, a gentleman by the name of Timothy Cruz to our uh, technology security committee. However, he has left the uh, company that he worked for, StoreTech, so what we're going to do now is change the wording of this resolution to not identify an individual, but just identify a store tech representative as the town's IT security officer and chairperson of the IT security committee. 4-7. Resolution adding Otter Track and Wood Duck Flyway to list of town private driveways and road names. This is a 911 requirement for any driveway that exceeds a certain length or where driveways connect multiple homes. Uh, it is a 911 system requirement. And so the gentleman who owns the property has requested these two names, Otter Track and Wood Duck Flyway. And they will be listed on our uh, records of private driveways and road names for 911 purposes. 4 -8. Resolution authorizing intermunicipal agreement between the town of Queensbury and Warren County towards combating aquatic invasive species in Glen Lake. Bless you. This is a resolution that we've done in the past. It earmarks $25,000 in funding from the town of Lake George to combat 
aquatic invasive species on Glen Lake. The reason we uh, choose Glen Lake is it does have public access and the town of Queensbury residents do use this public access quite frequently. Um, some people have asked why we don't do it with other water bodies in the town that um, the reason that we don't is because there are no public access ways there. So we feel the money is better spent <clears throat> with the residents that um, can access the lake that don't uh, uh, enjoy the uh, property around it. 4-9. Resolution setting public hearing on Glen Lake Aquatic Plant Growth Control District Benefit Tax Rule for 2019. So this is a resolution that, again, the folks in the next three will be the same. We have three different uh, districts that are really controlled by members of that district, but this town board has to approve their recommendations. <coughs> They did set a new um, rate on their taxes. However, they are the same as they were in 2018. The uh, um, public hearing will be conducted on September 23rd, seven o'clock here in the activity center. 410. Resolution setting public hearing on Lake Sunnyside Aquatic Plant Growth Control District Benefit Tax Rule for 2019. And same thing, this is for um, Lake Sunnyside, uh, again, it is, uh, comes from a recommendation of their board to us. The resolution will be on September 23rd, and the rates are the same as they were in 2018. 411. Resolution setting public hearing on North Queensbury Wastewater Disposal District, Dunham's Bay, benefit tax rule for 2019. And not to repeat myself too much, but again, this is for Dunham's Bay, same thing. There'll be a public hearing on September 23rd here at the Activity Center, 7 o'clock, for the Dunham's Bay Benefit Tax Roll. And once again, their rates will remain the same as they were in 2018. 412. Resolution to amend 2019 budget. We do have to move some money around. There is one large uh, capital construction fund uh, for $420,000. They're taking this money out of the capital construction fund, and they're going to use it towards debt service of the Cary Road sewer project. Besides that, there's very minimal money being moved. 413. Resolution approving audit bills, warrants of August 27th and September 10th, 2019. This is usually my favorite resolution because it means we're done. Um, these are our warrants. Uh, in order to pay the bills, we have to approve them. So there are two warrants with run dates of August 27th and September 15th and payment dates of August 27th and September 10th, totaling $26,922.12 and $1,421,928.11. And those are your 13 resolutions. So at this time, I will open the floor if anybody would like to come forward and talk about any resolutions. George, come on out. Uh, George Winters for John Clinton Road. Are you moving the playground from where it is now? Uh, some of that equipment being moved? No, or no. It, that, that equipment is beyond repair. Okay. Um, if 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 you ever, um, and I'm serious when I when I'm, I'm sincere when I say this, if you have some time, go over and take a look at it. Yeah, it, it really is in a state of disrepair. So they are starting over. Yeah, I know. It was 25 years 25 ago. Years. You know what? So. Um, they, and we do feel Hubby Pond is a much better location yeah. uh, for this playground. This yeah. is the Freedom Park, so it's yeah. ADA compliant, and they are doing other work within the park to move things from the front to the back so they can have this playground in the front. Yeah, and the, when you're buying equipment, are they going to set it up, the people you're buying from? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Because they asked for volunteers before. There was volunteers that built the other one. Because I know they, they asked Finch Frying and Scott Papered and some of the bigger mills around were there to volunteer. That was a great question. I don't believe you remember that. Yeah, I worked on it. <laughs> did you really? It was right. raining. It was raining the day we did it. And I had a guy with me and I said, you stick with me. And we'll take the saw. And they had a, a tent over the saw. And it rained hard that day. So Finch Prime supplied uh, raincoats and everything for us, but 
Well, you should be proud of the yes. fact that it's lasted so yes. long. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for your... It's uh, been, yeah, that, that was a, a big well, project. And they had one man that come from the factory and told us what we had to do, you know. But uh, I think they built it in a week. I don't think we've ever driven by there, but there yeah. no, it's there. always somebody there. Oh, okay, there. thank you. Thanks, Joy, very much. Would anybody else care to uh, come up and talk about any resolutions? You're making this way too easy for me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, with that said, would anybody like to, first of all, pull any resolutions for a roll call vote? No, we can't. Well, if you don't vote for it, it won't pass. <laughs> okay. Would everybody care to vote on vote on resolutions four point one through four point one three? So moved. Okay. So moved, moved by Catherine. Second by George. Anyone monopolize it, Catherine? No. Uh, Rose. Uh, Rose. Oh. Councilperson Medivier. Yes. Atherton. Yes. Barone. Yes. All right. We got through that. Almost unscathed. <laughs> so. What's next on my cheat sheet? Correspondence, Rose, do you have any no, correspondence? No, 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 public. Nope, next Performing. is privilege of the floor, after correspondence. Ah. Yeah, a cheat sheet. <laughs> I'm listening to the boss. Rose, all right, next is privilege of the floor. This is an opportunity to come up and speak to any matter you wish to speak of. It doesn't necessarily have to be a town matter, although we like to speak about the town. So do I have any takers to come up? Come on up, George. George Winters for John Klein and Rowan. What I wanted to do was mention again, I've mentioned it several times that the town of Queensbury, not to give the Civic Center to 50,000 or 50, um, thousand they're asking for. I, I I believe the Civic Center is overfunded already. You know, they they keep getting a little money from the state. Look what they kept from the county. They got some from the city. And I believe anybody could run it if they keep getting the money that this outfit gets, you know? So they're all businessmen. And I, I, I don't believe the town of Queensbury should be giving it to them. I know John would what, tell me the difference. It was an ask. It was not a decision, not, not a decision to, decision made, to yeah. do it. Yeah, well, they were, it was in the paper. They said they asked. And I know one not too long ago I asked if we were, they were considering it. And John said, yeah, they, they were considering it. They hadn't donated it yet. But. No, we haven't. We haven't given any. Yeah, we, we haven't even had that at a workshop no, to discuss. Right. No, we have not had. So, okay, we'll certainly take your comments under advisement. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks, George. Mr. Steck, nothing. No questions. Didn't want to do Yeah, you're doing all right. Not as not as good as one of the guys that we had up here a few years ago. All right, he had a little more practice. All right. With that said, town board discussions. Catherine? I do have two things. One is that this Thursday night at um, 7 o'clock at the Scoville Center in, uh, at SUNY is a zero waste talk by Neil Seldman, who's a PhD and Director of Waste to Wealth Initiative at the Institute for Local Self-Reliance in Washington, D.C. Uh, it's an evening presentation co-sponsored by both the, um, uh, the new uh, Water Clean Air Action Network and the Sustainability Program at SUNY Adirondack. Um, it's a talk and it's about zero waste. Uh, so zero waste how Warren and Washington counties can transition from incineration to zero waste. It's extremely important. Uh, that's, so that's a talk on Thursday night. On Friday from 9 till 12.30, there's a workshop for citizens and officials to become more familiar with zero waste and what we can do about it and how we can create it. And that's at the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Glens Falls at 21 Weeks Road. If anyone, if they're both free, 
Um, if anyone's interested in attending the workshop, please call 518-692-8242. And then the second one is on September 20th, there's a whole week of uh, climate, uh, global climate strike. It's to try and get the young, uh, uh, well, they're gonna come out of school. Um, it's all over the country, uh, probably the world. It, it started with, um, uh, I've forgotten her name now, Thunberg, Greta Thunberg from Sweden. And so SUNY Adirondack is having a learning kind of thing at the student center from 11 till 2 uh, on the 20th. There's also a big march in Albany and New York City and Washington, D.C. as well. If anybody wants to go down there. And so there's several events happening. There'll be several tables. There's a, uh, a, a, a professor, Wendy Johnston, who's the political science professor. She will do a comparison of the two Mad Max movies. So that must, must be like Armageddon, I suppose. Um, with clips, there's National Grid will have their electric vehicle display. There's a solar display in one of the quads. There's Chartwells, which is a sustainable, sustainable food display. Um, the, the Greta Thunberg, turn, actually Thunberg, sorry, uh, video will be in the student center cafeteria. And there's other stuff going on, different tables. So that's from 11 to 2 on September 20th. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. George. Um, I, I don't have anything other than I, I'd like to take my time to, uh, and I didn't get an opportunity to do it when he was up there, but address some of uh, Mr. Winter's concerns about um, uh, the Civic Center. Um, I spent almost three years on the Civic Center Foundation Board before coming on to the town board. And um, you will never find a more dedicated uh, and involved group of people. You mentioned they were business people, and yes, you're right. They're, they're business people. They, they run big businesses in the area. There's some bankers there. And between the time they put in and the money that they donate to keep that place going, they get nothing back for everything they do for the Civic Center. Uh, they put their time in because they feel it's the right thing to do to give back to the community. They have done two different studies so that they have economic data to show the county to the town on the economy that they drive by having the Civic Center there, the restaurants that make money when there are events at the Civic Center, the hotels, there are programs that bring people into the area. They just got the uh, New York State Basketball Association uh, tournament back for next year, for 2020, and I think that goes on for three years. Yes, we lost it for a few years, but now we have that coming back. That brings a lot of people into the area. So they are an economic engine. They are putting money back into the economy. Yes, it is costing some money. And thank goodness we have the county that sees that outcome that you know they are an economic engine for not only Glens Falls, but for the region, for the town of Queensbury and for Warren County. So um, not that we've made a decision here at the town, but I just wanted you to know that um, you know, they, they put back as much as they get. That's right. my speech. Okay. <laughs> Good words. Um, segue to that. So I don't know if anybody knew that there was a car show in town this weekend, but um, there was. I was not here this weekend. I made sure to get out of Dodge. Um, I heard that the village was six and seven people deep in the heart of the village watching the cars and it was a perfect weekend for once for these car enthusiasts. Um, Sunday was quite barren, but Friday was out of control and Saturday was even worse. So that's one thing, you see them around. They're not only in Lake George, I saw a lot of cars in Queensbury and uh, I was up north one day and there were a tremendous amount of vehicles up there. So. Um, I think it's still a great event. I, I, I do think it's outgrowing itself more than anything else that occurs around here. And this weekend was probably proof of that. But uh, with that said, it certainly is an economic driver to our community. The weekend before, if you didn't notice, there was a, another very successful triathlon 
Um, I do not participate in those, nor was I um, able to ride this year to get in the way of anybody. I had a little injury myself, so I stayed off the bike, but um, I uh, had to wait quite a while for riders to ride by my neighborhood so I could get out to get up to the store. And um, another fantastic event that occurred over Labor Day weekend. So kudos to them. Weather was absolutely perfect for that as well. So good for them. Um, I do have a few things that John wanted me to pass along to you. Um, one is not his uh, State of the Union, although I know you're going to miss that. that thing. <laughs> um, we received a nice letter from Norm Dasher at the Hyde Collection thanking us for our generosity. We do give the Hyde $10,000 each year, and it does help out to attract new donors, expand the collection, and having the uh, potential to inspire people the way Charles, or, excuse me, Charlotte Hyde envisioned. So we're always glad to help out the Hyde, and we thank Norm for his um, debt of gratitude. We received a nice letter from the Warren County Snowmobile Club that says, on behalf of the entire South Warren Snowmobile Club, we would like to thank you and the town board for the, their years of support to our club. Your friends allow us to continue to maintain and groom the snowmobile trails in the Lake George Queensbury area during the long winter months. We hope this effort brings families into the town of Queensbury during the winter and makes them consider coming back during the summer. I know for a fact that they um, frequent the um, bars and gas stations at 149 and Ridge Road. I see them there uh, quite often in the winter time and they keep going through so we know they're coming to Queensbury. Um, we received an invitation for a change of command. Um, Jen, Jennifer Switzer, council uh, person Jennifer Switzer will be attending uh, this event. It's to wish uh, the outgoing commander, Major Glenford P. Rose, um, out and to welcome the incoming commander, Major Jason L. Cossey, in to um, the uh, guard. So we congratulate both of those gentlemen. Uh, two letters that actually have to do with the Warren, uh, excuse me, the Gurney Lane uh, trail system. If you're not aware, we have a, a Gurney Lane mountain bike single track system. And we just received notice that we were rated number one mountain bike trail system in New York State by single track, uh, single tracks, which is a uh, organization. So we're pretty excited about that. If you do any mountain biking and you've never been to Gurney Lane, you have to go. It's actually a blast. And if you don't mountain bike and you want to get out and do something, go buy yourself a bike and go mountain biking in Gurney Lane. Second was a nice letter from a gentleman, Frank Winters. who just wanted to let Steve uh, from the recreation department know how much he appreciates the mountain bike trail, the mountain bike trail system at Gurney Lane. And they come up here from Glenville whenever they can. They ride the Cherney Gurney and uh, feel it's a great cause. And he appreciates the significant tax investment that this town puts into the system. So that's two good things. And that's all I have. Anything else for the good of the order, as John would say? <laughs> well, we'd like to thank Look TV, Joel Barlow, our sponsors, including StoreTech. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. We'll adjourn. Have a good night. The following program is underwritten by the generous support of Associates of Glens Falls and Loomis and LaPan Insurance. Since 1852, they have been assisting both businesses and individuals across the country secure the most comprehensive insurance products available. Associates of Glens Falls and Loomis and LaPan are one of New York's largest independently owned insurance agencies. Public affairs programming on Look TV is underwritten by the generous support of Pennell's Restaurant, classic Italian American food since 1922, and Stored Tech, technology solutions for computers, networks, and phone. Stored Tech, your technology. Our passion. 1922, Babe Ruth debuts with the Yankees. 
WGY signs on air. Exterminator wins the Saratoga Cup, and Pinnell's Restaurant opens its doors for the very first time. For five generations, Pinnell's has been preparing delicious Italian food, served in a comfortable, home-like setting where everyone is welcome. 90 years of authentic Italian recipes, 90 years of the freshest ingredients, and 90 years of the finest classic Italian dishes, all made daily by hand. Pinnell's Italian Restaurant, a Saratoga dining tradition since 1922. Be firms deal only with prevention, the systems that block hackers and viruses. Stored Tech knows the root cause is actually good people doing bad things. So we offer a security training program which includes certifying all participants to show they understand the basics. Technology solutions for computers, networks, and phones. Stored Tech, your technology, our passion.